come check out our D&D 5e actual play podcast, Super Quest Saga, the show where Will, Brian, your special guest Jake, and friend of the show Josh Freeland sit around the table and play some Dungeons and Dragons in space. It's Will's homebrew sci-fi space opera campaign. Find it on iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Super Quest Saga! Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from zany zones to zombie zoos. And today we're talking about Zug <laughs> Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How you doing today? I'm good, man. I want to talk about demons. Yeah, let's talk about demons, specifically uh, demon lords and specifically a uh, demon lady named Zuckmoy. Okay. So Zuckmoy is one of the major demon lords in Dungeons & Dragons, also known as the Demon Queen of Fungi and the Lady of Rotten Decay. Nice. Zuckmoy is a demon lord with one all-encompassing purpose and desire. This foul demoness wishes to infect all living things with her spores, transforming them into her mindless servants and eventually into decomposed hosts for the mushrooms, molds, and other fungi that she spawns. I want you to spout bacteria so I can eat you slowly. Yeah, basically. But you'll already be dead. Yeah, well, okay. and she wants to, like, assimilate everyone into one, like, single being that she is, like, in charge of. Oh, like a big interconnecting fungus? Yes, basically. Okay. Basically so, yeah. So, she pretty much openly despises all forms of life not directly related to fungus or moss, <laughs> and she wishes to transform all the realms into a fungal paradise that she alone rules. It's a weird kink. It is. <laughs> she is one of the oldest known demon lords, making her first appearance in the Temple of Elemental Evil module of first edition. Nice. Okay. That's yeah. an old one. Yeah, it's a very old one. One of the first, for sure. So Zuckmoy's appearance has actually fluctuated over the years and additions in D&D. Originally, she was described as a bulbous monstrosity that resembled a puffball mushroom with a toadstool <laughs> growing on top. Okay. Uh, she had four elephantine legs with suckers on the bottom, supporting her spherically shaped body. Oh, man. Yeah. Atop her globular torso, a two-foot-long mushroom stem neck grew, capped by a head uh, with a squashed, vaguely humanoid uh, face. She's like a fucking weird brachiosaur. Right, exactly. Big old broccoli with, stock legs. And, yeah, with round black eyes. Oh, That's man. the last little detail I got in that form. But she doesn't look like that anymore. She looks quite different. Squishy so. and horrifying yeah, simultaneously. Indeed. Right. That's a Hufflepuff demon lord. Indeed. So by third edition, Zuckmoy had a bit of a makeover. Mm -hmm. uh, third edition, Zuckmoy resembled a humanoid female from the torso up. But rather than flesh, her body was described as being composed of thick, rancid sheets and coils of fungus. Oh. Um, that just by happenstance and screw into the shape of what would otherwise be an attractive woman. Have you seen those um, those time, those fungus time lapses? Those um, yeah, I have seen those. Yeah, I yeah. think everybody's seen them. Yeah. They're the fucking best. Yeah, they're really interesting. They're yeah. very satisfying to watch for some reason. Does she grow a new fungus, like all super slow? Uh, like if you time lapses Demon Lord, she's like epic? I think she grows pretty quick, so I don't oh. think you need to time. She is the time lapse. She's time. <laughs> that's her power. She <laughs> can time lapse herself very quickly to exactly. regenerate. That's her secret. Um, small, uh, small, like spatial time travel. Right. <laughs> so four fibrous antlers protrude from her brow and her hands are long and cruel talons. Beneath her torso, she has a coiling pillar of lashing ropey tentacles and other fungal growths, and her skin is a nauseating swirl of grays, blues, and purples, and blacks. Ooh, okay. Um, now, so what I just described is generally what she looks like or how she's depicted. Sure. But that's like the third and fourth edition. Fifth edition has really kind of like stepped it up. She looks oh. amazing. She oh. looks fantastic in fifth edition. I think she's one of the best designed demon lords. Uh, I yeah, think I wrote right, down a, a right now. I'm picturing a, a giant mushroom brachiosaur, and then I'm picturing a, a mushroom mermaid. <laughs> okay, that's yeah, that's not that's not too bad. So I think I wrote some of the five E description out. Let's see here. So five E stuck with the semi humanoid look with some changes and came up with a better explanation as to why she looks humanoid at all. I like that. Okay, um, yeah, and rather than by happenstance, she looks like a semi beautiful humanoid. No, let's actually explain it. So it said that rather than her feminine appearance being mere happenstance, it is instead by Zuckmoy's design. Zuckmoy can control all funguses and molds that she comes into contact with. This includes the ones that make up her body. Thus, it is said that Zuckmoy more herself into her humanoidish form as an act of soulless mockery of mortal life and its many facets that she despises so much. All the 5e artwork really leans into like the alien inhuman aspect of Zuckmoy. Like she looks really gross, but at the same time, like really haunting. 
Like okay. it's hard for me to describe, but she's she looks like very a, alien. She's doing like a humanoid parody. Is that what yeah, she, yeah, yeah. And because of that, she looks very like alien and wrong. Sure. Yeah. Uh, this is a. Uh, this is just jealous. She's just jealous. She's just. Jealous. It's like Mimikyu from Pokemon. <laughs> right. It looks like Pikachu. Like put a bag, a pillowcase over itself, and drew mm-hmm. Pikachu's face on it, just because it's jealous of Pikachu. Yeah, right. Right. Stupid. <laughs> I like Mimikyu, but yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, I think uh, she's one of the best designed uh, D&D entities out there. Um, and her look is very aesthetically pleasing while really fucking gross at the same time. Okay. So, in all the source books... That it's a weird mix of emotions. It, it really is, yeah. So, kind of like when you're watching a time lapse of the fungus. Oh, yeah, okay. I got it. <laughs> yeah. So, in all the source books uh, and research that I did on Zuckmoy, I found lots of written material detailing her appearance, her abilities, a little bit of her history, but there's scarce little that I I could find detailing like who she is like what she's like and like nothing about like her origins what is she like to read before yeah what is she, she like goes to bed to exactly uh, what are her interests in her times is, is it a breakfast burrito and what kind <laughs> is, is it a breakfast sandwich right right exactly so now i'm not sure if this was done by design or simply an oversight um i do find it fitting uh that zugmoy is kind of this enigmatic and mysterious entity unlike many of the other demon lords who are very very much explained like it it was very well explained exactly how Yinagu loves to kill things. Yeah. And like why he loves to kill things and like why he doesn't never not kill things. Why a yurt? <laughs> Nobody needs to know, but why he loves to kill? That's public knowledge. Exactly. Yeah. But she, again, she's enigmatic and mysterious. And uh, I think, again, it's fitting because she's a very alien life form compared to uh, the common races and even some of the more uncommon ones that we talk about in D&D. Uh, she's as what is essentially a giant, massive, sentient, evil fungus. Her <laughs> mentality and personality should probably be equally as alien and unknowable. Yeah. So still from the lore that I could find in the history of her actions, I pieced together. Uh, I managed to put together a meager but likely accurate personality profile. Okay. So let's get into it. Let's, uh, let's get in this e-harmony for demon lords right <laughs> e-harmony now. E-harmony for fungi. Uh, Zekmoy is a cruel, calculating, emotionless, and ambitious demon lord. When she's not languishing in her fungal kingdom and allowing her fungoid children to attend her every need, Zekmoy is usually actively warring with her arch rival, uh, Jewiplex, for complete control over the 222nd layer of the abyss, or concocting and executing elaborate schemes to increase her influence over the material plane. Zekmoy does not have allies or friends. She only has thralls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's the kind of person she is. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions so far? Um, I just, the, the abyss is so weird because like th- there's this, I feel this deep need to quantify it. Like uh, you're right, like right, right. The, like even in the writing, it's always, they're numbering them and like True. saying things like, oh, you get half, like they're, they're like but quantifying they're, but they're it numbers wise, infinite, but, yeah. but also it's split in half. Yeah. I, it's, it's just like, like, is this just the knowable I think yeah, scope that's the idea. It. It's just a knowable scope. It's, just it's a, like a it's habited. Like, yeah, place. it's like the visible portion of the universe. Like we know it's much much bigger, but like this is all we got. And it's all we're ever going to get. So this is what we're dealing with. I always picture it on like you know how on a cosmic scale, if you zoom out of the universe, it looks like brain synapses or whatever. Oh, it does kind of yeah. Yeah, or like the the that overarching pattern. I feel like the abyss is like a just a like it's bubbling. Looks like um. Hmm. Like soap bubbles, just like building, you know. I can kind of see that. I, I see what you're, what you mean. Sort of. That's, that's pretty cool. Sort of the image. I don't know. I, that's I a cool just, way to look like the plane. Yeah, like the more I, the more we talk about it, the more I like try. I think about that aspect of it. Like, what is, what is going on in this fucking place? <laughs> what is this goddamn place? Yeah. Well, speaking of this goddamn place, let's talk about her layer of the abyss. Yeah. So, as I said before, Zuckmoy makes her Zuckmoy makes her home on the 222nd layer of the abyss, also known as Shidakla. Say that five times fast. <laughs> Shit that claw. Shed a claw. Shed a claw. Yes, yes. Okay. From her stinking palace of two dozen enormous mushrooms of pale yellow and rancid brown. I love the the scent descriptors in all the all the places we yeah. go in the abyss. She she a stinky girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> These massive fungi are said to be the largest mushrooms in the known multiverse, mm. arising nearly four miles into the air from a bog at the geographical center of Shadakla. Again, what is the geographical center of infinity? Apparently, this place. We need it so we can go there. Exactly, yeah. So <laughs> bridges of shell fungi connect the cancerous growths, which hold numerous horrific chambers hollowed out from their stalks and caps. The swampy land surrounding the palace is choked with acid puffballs and poison vapors. Okay. So there was a time long ago when Zuckmoy ruled the entire lair uh, completely uncontested. Like this was her home. This was her zone. Yeah, mushrooms everywhere. Right. But due to unforeseen circumstances, which we'll get into a little bit later, Zuckmoy was trapped elsewhere for an extended period of time. Uh, this happens in the Temple of Elemental Evil module. Okay. Um, 
And upon her return, she found that Duoblex, the demon prince of slime and ooze, had taken the opportunity to claim all the layers underground caverns as his own, and even some remote corners of the surface realm as well. So to this day, the two have been engaged in an insurmountable stalemate of a war to decide who will rule over the layer completely. It's like a it's like a fucking uh, match of Splatoon. Like the the, the nasty <laughs> yes. the nasty yeah. ooze monster is like throwing his juice down and he's yeah. like, Oh, that's mine now. And yeah. she's like, No, time lapse I'm trying to make the mushrooms it's grow back over it. I like that actually. That's exactly they're constantly trying to overgrow each other. He's like slugging I over stuff that. like I'm leaving a trail. <laughs> We're going to do the Jew of Lakes episode. We'll be the next demon lord we do, so I'm looking forward to that one. There's so much abyss. Why are they, you fighting over this one spot? He's like, no, the middle's mine. <laughs> Gross. That's a really good point. It's infinite. Like, why do they have to, why do they have to be in the same It's because they crave chaos. They do, they, and they crave conflict. They crave it's it. It's true. Um, but yeah, they hate each other. So, <laughs> since this is Zuckmoy's episode, we're going to focus on her domain, uh, which is the surface world of Shadakla, not the underworld. That'll be for the Jubilex episode. Situated between two sluggish branches of the River Styx. I don't know if you remember this, but the River Styx runs through every abyssal layer, every lower plane at all times. And then I do the bit where I don't remember the name of the people that uh, use it primarily as travel. Yeah. Is there. it because you don't remember or is it because you pretend not to remember? No, I actually don't. I uh, cannot recall the name at this time. They're called the Eugoliths. The Eugoliths. Yeah. <laughs> the third type of fiend. The third fiends. <laughs> right. So, okay, I'll try to commit that to memory for future episodes. We'll see how, yeah, we'll see well, how you do. I like those episodes. The, the, you do. Them traveling the river sticks is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Um, so Shadakla is a vast bog interspersed here and there by low hills and fog shrouded moors surprisingly the layer has few outlandish features to mark it as other an otherworldly realm as many other outer plane domains do to the visitor from uh, the material plane shadakla may even look like home for a brief moment of time until the differences between their familiar regional swamp and the bogs of the abyss become increasingly apparent mm. foremost among these differences is the fact that shadakla has no stars sun or moon the skies above are constantly overcast dark and gloomy often the oh. I know what you're going. Bioluminescent fungus. Oh, yeah. I wasn't, but there probably oh, is. Dang. There probably super is. There probably super is. Yeah. So often the clouds take on an appalling uh, take on appalling colors like mud brown, bruised purple, or foul rotten green. Mm, I love all those. Yeah. <laughs> so storms are also frequent here. Torrential downpours and thunderstorms that leave vast swaths of lands flooded. Uh, there are no true oceans in Shadakla, only deep deep marshlands um the temperature always seems to hover around 90 degrees fahrenheit and the humidity is uncomfortably high what the fuck this place is like the rainforest but all fungus this place is florida yeah <laughs> my <laughs> god welcome to shadakla we just need a crazy man <laughs> and we got it everything in shadakla seems to be covered in a thin layer of clinging moisture okay it's a very moist zone i love that word everybody I, does i know say moist again uh, moist ah good audio you say you say a word enough times it's, it loses its meaning um <laughs> uh, should that claw is there a joke there i don't i've been racking my brain <laughs> i've been watching you i've been watching you like mull it over i, I don't like, think there is uh, leave, me, <laughs> leave me your best should that claw joke in the comments oh no <laughs> So all manner of plant and fungal creatures dwell upon the surface of Shadakla, um, paying honor to Zuckmoy by means of the parasitic price process that keeps them alive. Mm. Uh, phantom fungi, myconids, shambling mounds, vine blights, and tree blights reveling in its unnatural warm dampness. Okay. Um, all the plant monsters of the lair are generally infested with fungoid parasitic growths. Um, so they're not Fun. they're so not I, even their normal selves. They're kind of thralls themselves. All your normal monster descriptions you need to tack on like uh, it's got mushrooms grown out of its cheekbones or exactly, whatever. Exactly, okay. right. So demons also dwell here. I mean, it is the abyss. Uh, and they also serve the fungi queen. So rocks are common in the skies above. Um, these alligator tree-like demons that we haven't really talked about called uh, Vathagus. Mm. Or Vathagai, I guess. Vathagai. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, there's Hezrafs, which are in the Monster Manual. They're like big toad-like demons, which is perfect for like the bog area. But with mushrooms all over them or whatever. No, no way. the demons a... The demons are just demons. Oh, okay. So these are like the animals of the mushroom yeah, forest. Yeah, and I thought it was really cool because I was going through the list of the ones that live here. I'm like, oh, it's all very fitting. They're like the demon version of the animals that would live in a bog. Fun trap. The growth of the time lapse has taken over the toad, and when uh -huh. you get close to it, it like gets up and like all that shit falls off of it or whatever. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. fucking awesome. Yeah, it'd be dope. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chasmes, the I don't know if you remember these ones, they're like the fly humanoid demons. It's got that long beak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. 
and they're uh, fucking huge and yeah, scary. Yeah, it looks like uh, what's that Flyman shit or whatever. The fly. The fly. Yeah, yeah. like the fly. It yeah. looks like that with a long beak and like sure. a little more bulbous, yeah, I so guess. They fly around this place too. No which way. Is, again, very fitting. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> goddamn it, Brian. Where was I? Um, so yeah, all these beings can be encountered with some frequency, as well as all the fungus monsters we talked about before. These faithful servants of the fungi queen seek out and destroy the few alien beings of organic ooze that serve Jewablex and emerge from the lightless depths <laughs> of the lair below. Okay. Yeah. So the most tragic inhabitants of Shadokla, though, are the lost souls captured by Zuckmoy's cults. Many of these souls are actually cult members themselves who died before accomplishing anything of note and therefore did not earn a place at Zuckmoy's side. Uh, some of the souls, though, are the spirits of folk who were sacrificed in a horrific and slow fungal ritual known as Zuckmoy's Cradle, which we'll get into uh, more towards the end of the episode. They failed a wisdom save and they got eaten oh, by the dude, time lapse. It's, dude, it's real bad. This, oh, this no. is probably one of the worst rituals that I've read about. We've read about some weird, bad ones, but this one really fucking grossed me is out. It's just like the flesh eating scarabs from the mummy, but it's just a bunch no, of really slow this mushrooms. This one combines a lot of different phobias, which oh. we'll get into. So, creatures sacrificed in this manner have days to consider their fate as they die Aww. and most eventually give up on their own faith long before they actually die so when they eventually do perish Zuckmoy is as close to a deity as their broken minds can accept and so they end up here on Shadokla. Ah oh, dang. <clears throat> and I got one more paragraph and we'll take short rest. The souls are listless broken figures similar to who they were in life yet without the drive to achieve anything more be than basic survival. Uh, they have no joy and when they aren't seeking shelter from the floods or avoiding any one of the numerous abyssal predators, uh, they loll about in huts made of sticks, bones, and mud, hopelessly fishing for food that is too infested to eat. These lost souls are constantly hungry and endlessly ruined. Zuckmoy often farms them for fertilizer for her favorite fungus gardens. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's take a short rest. Yum. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the part of the episode we're not talking about that last thing. No, we're not. We're talking about patrons that have come in, and we're also <laughs> talking about people we love, which is you guys. I love you. I also love you. Good job, Will. <laughs> uh, let's talk about... I feel like I'm improving by the week. Yeah, thanks for listening to the show so much. If you want to help us out, you can become a patron, or you can just tell somebody about the show. It's totally cool. But the people who do come in as patrons, thank you so much. You help us make our studio life that much better. Uh, month by month, we're able to make like upgrades and stuff to help our lives in post-production get easier, crisper, nicer, sweeter. It smells better. Everybody <laughs> likes that. Uh, let's welcome Zach Dieter. Thank you, Zach. Michael Lentz. Thank you, Michael. Carl D. Busca. Thank you, Carl. Peter Warren. Thank you, Peter. Jeremy Blackburn. Thank you, Jeremy. Killian. Thank you, Killian. Andrew Isgera. Thank you, Andrew. Cody. Thank you, Cody. Thanks, guys. Um, make sure you're checking out your bonus content. I'm going to uh, update a lot of that on the day of this recording um, and get things that I've been putting in the bank back to speed. Make sure you're checking out your bonus content one more time. There's a lot of it on there. there if you're interested in becoming a patron and supporting the show on that level, there are lots of extras. A monthly podcast called uh, The Dungeon Chats that mm -hmm. me and Will do that's about nothing. And then <laughs> uh, Flashbang and the Surgeon, which is a uh, Batman, the animated series inspired D and D import. If you like uh, Super Quest Saga, I'm sure you'll like what we call F Bats. Mm -hmm. um, early episodes. There's going to be an extra one in there, and lots of other stuff, dude. Live live plays, comedy games, all kinds of stuff. We're doing it. Let's get back to the show. Back to the show. We've returned. Indeed, we have. Whoa! <laughs> back to the fungal layer of the 222nd of the. Layer of the U.S. It's, uh, it's a good one. Yeah, it's it's well. I don't know if it's a good one. It's, well, it's it's uh, the aesthetic here is mm -hmm. real fun, especially with like yeah. one corner of it being occupied by a giant ooze guy. Yes, exactly. It's and just all like spraying buddies. his stuff. <laughs> That's like, hilarious. Uh, well, do he's, under, he's underground, but I, I like your frog image. Stupid smack. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So unlike other demon lords, Zuckmoy is quite active and involved in developing her cult presence. On the material plane. Okay. Uh, this is largely in part due to the fact that it is far more difficult for her to attract worshippers than other demon lords. 
Uh, most cultists are attracted to the allure of power or some other thing of value that the demon lord can provide that is otherwise unattainable to a cultist. So Orcus has his power of the undead. Um, Grost has his sex capades. Baphomet <laughs> has his bro science. Um, well, it turns out that most humanoids are not exactly thrilled about the idea of worshiping fungus or becoming infected with fungus or even really being around fungus in general. It's mostly just farmers because the fertilizer she gives you so good. That's true. You can grow so many crop. <laughs> Uh, you got those rampant Zuckboy cults out in the farms. Many carrots. Um, so Zuckboy has to get creative with her recruitment methods because no one wants to talk to her is the problem. <laughs> I made you a mushroom bouquet. No? As, as, what do you mean it stinks like shit? It's supposed to smell like that. Um, essentially, <laughs> Zuckmoy has two types of cultists, uh, okay. the unwitting and the insane. Most, okay. Most, <laughs> <laughs> Most of her unwitting servants on the material plane are fungi infected to some degree, uh, whether through inhaling her mind controlling spores or being transformed by other cultures to the point where flesh and fungus become one. She, while you're sleeping, plants a mushroom in your arm mm -hmm. and she's like, I'll make it bigger if you don't do what I say. Exactly. Yes. There <laughs> like, we go. Damn it. She got <laughs> me. <laughs> um, such cultists are fungal extensions of the demon queen's will. Um, their devotion might have begun with a seemingly harmless uh, or her, their devotion might have begun with seemingly harmless promises offered by exotic spores and mushrooms, I guess drugs, <laughs> but quickly <laughs> consume it. But the spores and mushrooms quickly consume them body and soul. It's like, take these roofies. Yeah. They're going to grow shrooms totally out dope. of your toes. Yeah, seriously. What a cool plot hook to like be in a town where everybody's uh -huh. like always scratching. Ooh, I and like that. that. And yeah, then you yeah, find yeah. a pile of like mushroom heads that have been shaved off uh -huh. that are growing out of people's <clears> skin, like back behind the tavern. It's like Moy has a whole town in her thrall. Your, uh, your human fighter got too drunk trying to keep up with the dwarf and he went to go barf in the alley and he found all the mushrooms in the oh, bag. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Zugmoy town. Indeed. <laughs> um, <laughs> so oftentimes Zugmoy has to hide her cult within the ranks of or behind the guise of a different entity. So usually some sort of nature deity or elemental entity. Her greatest triumph and also in a lot of ways her greatest error in this arena was the creation of the Temple of Elemental Evil. Mm. So she's the person responsible for the temple itself and the cult around it. Okay. Um, this facade cult consisted of four cults dedicated to the intrinsic evil within the four elements, fire, earth, wind, and water. Um, this is the, weird. There's no mushroom flavor here. No, because she's hiding within. So oh, yeah. she's like, I gotta make a really cool facade so I, exactly. they don't find out how fucking because lame I am. People love the elephant. <laughs> the elephants. They love the elements. Yeah. So they, it's really attractive. And what she does is she's got four cults. I, 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 let me explain it in my notes. Okay. So these four cults would work together against their enemies, yet had a built-in. Uh, competition between themselves that ensured that they would never grow too powerful for Zuckmoy's true cultists to manipulate them from within. Okay. So within the four cults is her real cult. A bunch of mushroom fools. And yeah, a bunch of mushroom fools <laughs> who are taking advantage and actually running everything by keeping everyone like pitted against each other and then recruiting from the crazy people within. I just picture a little like Toad from Mario. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. just a bunch of evil little ones of those. <laughs> bunch of evil and they're, of like, they're like running the <laughs> fire traps that you're, you're near and like the wind tornado thing. They're like pulling levers behind the scenes and I, they I really sound like, like psychopaths. Yes. Cause yeah. they do. <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> like what the the Mario Kart shit when he passes you? Yes, yes, absolutely. You Those are definitely his banana. He's like, Toad, Toad is definitely a worshiper of Zuckmoy. That is for sure. Um, the Temple of Elemental Evil's popularity among local human cultures proved to be its undoing, though. Uh, they grew too potent too quickly and attracted the attention of a consortium of powerful wizards known as the Circle of Eight. Oh. Uh, the Circle of Eight's primary goal is slash was the preservation of the balance of power between the forces of good, evil, law, and chaos in the world. Um, the Circle of Eight defeated the Temple's armies at the Battle of Emrity Meadows and imprisoned Zuckmoy in the Temple's dungeons. Okay. Um, so this is that point where she gets taken from her lair and she's trapped for years and years on end. It's really hard to uh, like eat stone if you're a fungus. It's true. I mean, I don't think you, I just don't think you can. She's like, fuck, uh, my yeah. only weakness. Walls. <laughs> she she does end up escaping many years later. Uh, <laughs> but it was during this time that Jewablex took advantage of her absence and overtook the caverns of her abyssal lair. So I wonder if that was boring for him. He's like, huh, I'm just spraying my goo everywhere. It's like it's all done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody's nobody's no here. No one's stopping me. This is my place now. <laughs> okay. I'm moving in. Uh, <laughs> since then, she's been rebuilding her strength and power on her abyssal realm of Shadowlack. Shadowlack. Okay. Shadaklaw. Shadaklaw. Yeah, there we go. I got it. Comments below. <clears throat> so those insane enough to willingly worship and serve Zuckmoy do exist. 
Um, her actual cults are usually fairly small, numbering no more than six to eight members. Often all members of a cult belong to the same family. They live quiet lives in remote rural areas, usually in like bogs or, or moist regions. Oh, there's that word again. Uh, <laughs> just far enough off the beaten path that they don't have to worry about too many inquisitive visitors. Yeah. Um, they don't want to have to explain that they're into some bunk lame shit. Right. But at the same time, close enough to trade routes so they can kidnap victims for sacrifice. Okay. Because it's, you know, it's they, they got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Cultists of Zuckmoy procure the majority of their sacrifices in this way by smashing, by snatching lone travelers from the roads. Okay. Um, those who are captured by the cult of Zuckmoy can expect to suffer all manner of monstrous rituals. When out on raids, cultists usually wear horrific leather masks that cover the lower half of their faces. So this is like straight horror movie shit. Yeah. Like you're out there in the middle of nowhere and these fucking leather masks. And fucking Bane comes out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. A bunch of Banes. A bunch of Banes. <laughs> come out ready to sacrifice you to their fungus queen. They're ready to do some... Uh... Okay. So one particularly loathsome ritual the cults of Zuckmoy force their prisoners to take part in is called the final feast. Um, <laughs> portobello's, baby. <laughs> portobello's That's all it. night. If you're at an <laughs> inn and they're only serving portobello, you're <laughs> fucked. You might have ran into a Zuckmoy coil. Um, so those who <laughs> hope to become a thrall of Zuckmoy. So this is uh, this is like a ritual. This is like a dual ritual. So it's a ritual that um, cultists will on purpose partake in. Okay. And they also force the prisoners to do it because it sucks. Okay. <laughs> it's like you're doing this dumb shit too. <laughs> exactly. So those who hope to become a thrall of Zuckmoy must voluntarily take part in and survive this feast. Oh my God. Yeah. These individuals are usually allowed to use magic to enhance their fortitude, but sacrifices are denied this luxury. So the final feast ritual consists of a five course meal served upon a warp table of wood made from the coffin lids of those murdered by Zuckmoy's cultists. Okay. That's the, weird. That's very specific. <laughs> um, the five courses of the final feast are as follows. A large stein of bitter ale brewed from striped toadstool served warm a platter of boiled id moss a bowl of chilled soup made of slime mold and rotting mushrooms laced with terranav root yeah okay a single violet fungus tentacle glazed with various noxious molds and mildew and finally <laughs> dessert consists of a small stack of phycomid stalks served in a thick bitter black syrup made from Bazid, Bazidrond sap and sprinkled with yellow mold spores. You said a lot of things I, right yeah, there. Yeah, dude. It, I told you. Like, I couldn't find out who Zuckmoy was as a person, but I found out a bunch of weird shit. <laughs> Here's a five course, the only five course meal I know how to make. And it's fucked, my friends. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Let's eat some fucking, uh, it's gotta be drugs. That's the grossest shit. You lost me at the soup. Like, you lost me before you started, but you, lo you really <laughs> lost me at the soup. Right, right. The soup was like, I was like, ah. Yeah. And then the, there's like, it also sucked down worse. this glazed tentacle okay no <laughs> please no if you made it through the soup and you're not like okay what the fuck you guys then you yeah well they're into it and you also lost your, the ones that aren't into it are sacrifices so, a so victim, are they being sacrificed <clears throat> or are they being converted into cultists uh no no these they're motherfuckers being, being sacrificed being dead, yeah dead. so eat, eat yourself to a death. victim who survives the final feast most people die eating this yeah shit. eat this Glazed tentacle, yeah. idiot. <laughs> a victim who survives the final feast and remains conscious wins the right to be returned to the cult's prison and left to starve to death. That's the winner. Okay, digest this awful last yeah. meal and die then. Those who succumb but do not die, so those who like basically pass out and fall into a coma, mm. um, or not even a coma, just pass out. Those who pass out um, are faced with a far more horrifying fate. Zuckmoy's Cradle. We talked about talking about this earlier. This disturbing method of sacrifice involves burying a helpless villain, villain victim in a shallow grave in a bog. Once a victim is placed in a shallow grave in the bog, the cradle, they call it, they are fitted with a mask similar to those worn by the cultists themselves, only this one is affixed with a long leather tube. The victim is then buried under a layer of sod and peat so that only the tube protrudes from the grave. This tube allows the victim to breathe, and cultists visit daily to pour... Um, spore laden gruel into the tube and give the to give the victim nourishment and keep them alive. What? The gruel has the unfortunate side effect though of growing into pallid fungi and mushrooms inside the victim's body. Oh. This is done until the victim dies. And this is these are the people who they live long enough to lose their faith in any type of god so like when they when they die <laughs> Jeez. when they die what they the go hell? to her lair. Yeah, welcome to This is like the this is we turn like okay, Inagu is running around slashing fools, but yeah. you're really turning it up on this I, one. I, don't look at me. This this is just the D&D lore, man. What the hell, wizards? <laughs> what the hell is What is this? This is sick. Like how is this going to come up organically exactly. in the game? <laughs> 
<laughs> you roll a history check. Oh yeah, they they do this real fucking. They shit, strip bro. the coffin lids off the blah blah blah, and it's it's just for the stink, it's just for that extra stink. What is this? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. This of. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> There it is. So I got one more paragraph, and then we're going to get into the stats of Zuck Boy, because this is D&D, not just a horror This show. is weird. This so, is some jigsaw shit about is. mushrooms. So, um, when it comes to rivals, Zuck Boy historically has two. We talked a bit about Jewablex, the Demon Lord of Oozes and Slimes, and he will be getting his own episode soon. Dope. I love that guy. I yeah. love the oozes. <laughs> Me too. I love but the chandelier ooze. But essentially, the oozes and the fungi of Shadakla are in constant war for supremacy and are in bitter stalemate. Zuckmoy's former biggest rival, though, used to be Lolf. So as I said before, Zuckmoy often struggles to gain any real traction on the material plane when it comes to influence or worshippers. But the one area that she has shown some serious success in is in gaining followers in the Underdark. Here, mushrooms and fungi are viewed not as parasites that spring from corruption, but as life-giving sources of food in a realm where most crops simply can't grow. Right, okay. It turns out it's much easier to get people to worship a food-making entity, uh, <laughs> much how in real life ancient cultures worship the sun for giving life to their crops. Is there like a PR team this chick has? It's like figuring this She's shit out. She's like, trying real suck, fucking dude. hard. Yeah. She's bringing in outside help. She is. She's got like one lawyer devil in there just like doing work for her. <laughs> Thus, the spider queen and the fungi queen have spent eons warring with each other for sway over the Underdark, uh, each other's followers thwarting each other at every turn. Sure. Any questions about Zach Moy, my friend? Did they real? Did they stop feuding because they realize there's plenty of uh, there's like infinite space for female representation in Dungeons um, and Dragons? The reason they stopped feuding is because uh, Lolf like ascended to becoming an intermediate god, and at that point, it's like I can't war with you yeah, anymore. You can't war with you anymore. You're way too strong. Like, okay, you're gonna fucking kill me. So okay, yeah, so they just kind of like, oh, all yeah. right. I'm like just the go followers home. still don't li- like each other, but like the war is basically stopped. Okay, like Lulf's moved on to bigger, better things, and like boy got scared. So sure. All right. So any questions before we get into the regional and layer effects and the madness effects of Zuckmoy? Uh, let's do it. All right. There we go. All right. So <clears throat> regional effects. The region containing Zuckmoy's lair is warped by her magic, creating one or more of the following effects. There's only three. Molds of fungi grow on surfaces within six miles of lair, even where they would normally find no purchase. So, extra fungus. Okay. Um, more. More. More <laughs> fungus. Uh, effect two. Plant life within one mile of the lair becomes infested with parasitic fungi, slowly mutating as it is overwhelmed. Uh, so more fungus. Okay. Uh, number three, if a humanoid spends at least one hour within one mile of the lair, the creature must succeed a DC 17 wisdom saving throw or descend into a madness. Oh, yeah. Here's the madness chart. Okay. So more fungus and some madness. So <laughs> these are the one, two, three, four, five madness effects that you can suffer within the presence of the fungi queen. So if you roll a one to 20, I see visions in the world around me that others do not. When did we start doing this? Uh, like, what? Like, how come some demon lords we had... Um, this I think table and some we don't. The Orcus episode is probably when we started, and we've done it for every demon episode except, except for uh, Demon Gorgon. Oh, I missed did. that one. Yeah. yeah okay. <clears throat> so, and I tend to follow the same format every time I do an episode. Yeah. So. Well, I, gotta, I gotta go back and listen because they're written in the first person and they're really jarring. Yes, they are. Uh, number two, I periodically slip into a canatotic state, staring off into the distance for long stretches of time. Okay. Number three, I see an altered version of reality with my mind convincing itself that things are true, even in the face of overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Okay. Number four, my mind is slipping away and my intelligence seems to wax and wane. <laughs> I feel dumb. I feel Guys, really dumb. does anyone else feel dumb? <laughs> my and gray finally, matter is turning into fucking shrooms. I am constantly scratching at unseen fungal infections. Oh, yum. Here's the thing: Are they actually there, or because they're unseen, they're not real? Now you're you're hallucinating. I guess it is madness, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's uh, those are her regional effects. Uh, let's get into her lair. So, so uh, we talked about her lair. It's for freaking mushroom palace and Shadakla. But mm-hmm. if she decides to take that somewhere, these things will happen. Um, all uh, layer actions occur on initiative counter 20, and she's got three choices. So the first one, Zuckmoy causes four gas spores or violet fungi, see the monster manual, to appear in unoccupied spaces that she chooses within the layer. They vanish after one hour. Mm. 
Number two, up to four plant creatures that are friendly to Zuckmoy and that Zuckmoy can see can use their reactions to move up to their speed and make one weapon attack. Now, that's pretty potent. Okay. That reminds me kind of a, a Yanagi. If like he's rolling with gnolls, his gnolls can do all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, Zuckmoy uses either her infestation spores or her mind control spores centered on a mushroom or other fungus within her lair, which is fucking everywhere, um, instead of on herself. Mm. So she just basically can... Her attacks have fucking infinite rage, basically. <laughs> okay. Because she's going to be surrounded by nothing but fungi. So, like, if she can center around any mushroom or fungi, then it's going to be literally anywhere in the room. Yeah. It's always, like, it seems like you're always prompted to go fight the demon lord in their lair. Except for, like, in modules where they... I would say the opposite. Like, with all that shit, it's like, you don't want to deal with that. No, well, I mean, like, that's why it's written there, mm. right? Like, because you're probably going to be in the lair fighting them. Um... I think it's like 50-50. It's like it's written for the 50% of people that want to fucking do that shit and the DM that wants them to do that shit. And it's written the other 50% to scare them into not doing that shit. I guess it's like plot wise, like you might run into this demon lord outside of the abyss and then right. follow them into the abyss right. to finish the like, job. The stuff needs to be there because it can happen, obviously. And also, like, you should be discouraged from trying to fight a mighty entity within its lair because it's going to have a huge advantage. It's kind of cool. Like a, a, like a mega man boss, you know, you get them down to half health and they Mm -hmm. start changing their move set. Right. Like you, you take them down to half, they, Mm -hmm. they bail. Mm -hmm. And then now they're in the abyss and they're that much stronger. Right. Well, that's, and that's one way to look at it for sure. Deferential might like Fori had the bloodied, um, condition or it wasn't even really a condition. It was like, a. Um, a triggering effect so there was a lot of enemies especially the strong boss type enemies that when they hit bloodied suddenly they unlocked all these new moves oh cool so it was very yeah. video nice. esque yeah but let's get into Zuckmoy's um, stats yeah <clears throat> so Zuckmoy large fiend demon chaotic evil armor class of 18 that's natural armor so that fungus is real hard um, <laughs> some hard fungus <laughs> 304 HP uh, speed of 30 feet I guess that's fine like I don't even know how she walks honestly like a, like she's her lower half is a coiling pillar of like vines and tentacles. Probably like uh like Squidward. <laughs> I guess like Squidward, yes. <laughs> she's got twenty two strength, fifteen dexterity, eighteen constitution, twenty intelligence, so she's smart. Nineteen wisdom, twenty four charisma. Um That's why she's trying to rebrand all the time. Yeah, she's always she's, like, she's always thinking. I'm I'm locked into mushrooms, but I really gotta put some makeup on this. <laughs> exactly. Uh she's resistant to cold fire and lightning damage. She is immune to poisoning damage uh bludgeoning piercing and slashing that's not magical she's immune to being charmed exhausted frightened or poisoned so immune to the piercing and slashing uh or yeah not? if it's not magical completely immune oh wow which i think is that's, true for all standard, demon lords. Yeah. yeah and then the poison bit i don't know if that's for all the other demon lords because i'm i don't remember but it makes a lot of sense for her because she's a fungus girl po- at some point poison just stops working in this game basically yeah um she's like around level five six like Poison, yeah. poison's not a thing anymore. She's got true sight, 120 feet, um, telepathy. All, all the demon lords got that. Challenge rating a 23. She's up there. Okay, but still only about as strong as an ancient red dragon. This is where it gets a little. Only? Fu- yeah, this is where it gets a little funky for me because it's like ancient red dragon should be super, super powerful. But should a single ancient red dragon be as powerful as a demon lord? I, I don't think so. I think there should be a couple challenge rating beneath them. I think all the demon lords should be shifted up like two challenge ratings. Like a clear win over a material plane, like single entity. Yeah. Okay. Now, maybe maybe two ancient dragons can really take on one demon lord, and that's like an even fight. That seems more canonical to me, but whatever. It's all okay. just numbers. Okay. You know, you're the DM. You can make it work however you want. So she's got innate spell casting based on her charisma. She can cast spells like uh, detect magic, locate animals and plants, ray of sickness, dispel magic, and snaring strike, entangle plant growth, etherealness, and teleport. She's got legendary resistance, which we've gone over a thousand times. Three times a day, she can decide to succeed Say on a fail saving you. throw. Yeah. She's got advantage on all saving throws against spells and magical effects. So she's never going to fail a fucking save. Uh, magic weapons, Zuckmoy's weapons attacks are magical. So she has a multi attack. Uh, where she can make three pseudopod attacks so with her fungal lig- ligaments. <laughs> cool. Um, and it's considered magical. Plus 13 to hit, 10 foot reach. Uh, we're looking at 2d8 plus 6 bludgeoning damage plus 2d8 poison damage. It's, those numbers aren't huge, but then you think about it's three attacks, so it's, it's pretty potent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's got a... a What's the word I'm looking for? A action called the infestation spores that she can do three times a day. Zugmoy releases spores that burst out in a cloud that fills a 20 foot radius sphere centered on her. It lingers for one minute. 
um, as we know with the layer, it can center around whatever fuck she wants. Okay. <clears throat> Any In true f- underdark fashion, she right. farts. <laughs> it's so true. Any flesh and blood creatures in the cloud when it appears or that enters it later must make a DC 19 constitution saving throw. On a successful save, the creature can't be infected by the spores for 24 hours. Hmm. On a failed save, the creature is infected with a disease called the spores of Zuckmoy and also gains a random form of madness determined by the madness of Zuckmoy table. Um, <laughs> that sucks mid-combat. You're just I like, oh, oh, I'm crazy. Yeah. That lasts until the creature is cured of the disease or dies. Well, <laughs> while infected in this way, the creature can't be reinfected and it must repeat the saving throw at the end of every 24 hours. On a failure, the infected creature's body is slowly taken over by fungal growth. And after three such fail saves, the creature dies and is reanimated as a spore servant. If it's a type of creature that can be raised in such a way. Okay, sure. What's a type of creature that can't be raised? In- um, If it's not made of flesh and blood. Hmm. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff, but not. That's still most players are going to be flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah. What players <clears throat> would not be flesh and blood? Warforged. A warforged. Mm-hmm. Um, they yeah. don't have shard mines in this game yet, so not them. Okay, They're that's like it though. Crystal huh? people. Um, because like a dragon born is yeah, flesh, flesh and blood. And blood. Even yeah, I think scales. that's it. It's the only construct. It's the only not like humanoid. So or get wrecked, non Eberron players. Right. <laughs> so um, she has one last uh, action called mind control spores. And this is on a recharge of five or six. Zuck Moy releases spores that burst out in a cloud that fills a 20 foot radius sphere centered on her or whatever the fuck she wants, according to her lair. Humanoids and beasts in the cloud when it appears or that enter it later make a DC 19 wisdom saving throw. On a successful save, they're fine. On a failed save, the creature is infected with a disease called the influence of Zuck Moy for 24 hours. While infected in this way, the creature is charmed by her and can't be reinfected by these spores. Um, there is no save. Once you're charmed, you're fucking charmed. Okay. <laughs> there is no save. Yeah. Got it. Um, reactions. Protective thrall. When Zuckmoy is hit by an attack, one creature within five feet of Zuckmoy that is charmed by her must use his reaction to be hit by the attack instead. Ooh, that can pile up pretty quickly. Mm. And lastly, she has two legendary actions. One is just an extra pseudopod attack, but the other is called exert will. One creature charmed by Zuckmoy that she can see must use its reaction to move up to its speed as she directs or to make a weapon attack against a target that she designates. So she's all about mind control and Got taking it. over. Okay. Any questions about Zuckmoy? Uh, Weird. Weird chick. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, she's a fungus queen monster. Fungus queen, demon lord, yeah. demon lady. Well, if you don't have any questions, I say we get ready for our long rest. Let's do that. All right, man. Um, Got my... Got to take off my little slippies that I wear around the house <laughs> before I get ready to jump for into sure. bedtime. For sure. Uh, but before I get into bedtime... I Let's. want to tell you some pertinent information. By all means, go ahead. Uh, I'll wait until you say your pertinent information. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the last call for our ongoing contest for the... Uh, Wild Mount. Yeah. The Critical Role Setting Book. Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. Explorer's Guide there to Wild Mount. And it's coming out in two days from the day this episode drops. And if you're interested in winning that book, all you have to do is share a link to this show on social media. If you do it on Twitter, just leave the hashtag DungeonCast. I'll go ahead and see that. Add you to the list. If you do it on other social media... But not on Instagram, because that has its own set of rules that Brian's going to go over. All you got to do is take a snapshot, send us uh, a picture uh, via email to the dungeon guest at gmail.com, and I'll add you to the list there, too. Yeah. And we're going to pull the winner on March 17th. Yep. Uh, we've gotten a lot of email submissions that way. Mm-hmm. Um, we've calculated them all. Uh, I've gotten some entries on Instagram. Um, so there's m- most recent posts. I usually don't post until the contest is over. Uh, go check out that post. You need to make your own post, Pump in the Dungeon Cast. If you do that, you're entered. You need to be following the Dungeon Cast on Instagram um, for that to all pan out for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty much it. We just want to spread the word about the show, and we want to give you a book for doing that, helping us do that. Exactly. So thanks a lot, guys. Um, check us out on social media, at the Dungeon Cast on Twitter, the Dungeon Cast on Instagram. You can email us at thedungeoncast at gmail.com about anything. About anything. If you're on Patreon, please send in messages that you want to be read. Um, I've actually got some of those. Um, I'll pull them up. Will, do you want to talk about our merch store while I do that? Uh, sure. Um, if you are interested in supporting us and interested in having like really dope stuff to wear, check out our merch store on teespring.com. The link is in the description below. And we have shirts. We have Dungeon Cast shirts. We have the old school logo shirts. We have uh, Super Quest Saga shirts. We have the SQS shirts with all the different characters. So if you like that show, we got Prim. We got 
uh, Sebastian, we got Carter, we got Persephone, and I think we have an Echo. Echo is being Echo is being worked on right yeah. now. There's going to be two Echo sets of Echo art. Nice. Um, so there's going to be uh, one that we're going to release right away, and then one that we're going to release later when it happens okay. in the show. Yeah. That. Um. So then, uh, so light spoilers, whatever. <laughs> there. Uh, what else do we need to say? Uh, oh, we're getting a new thumbnail commissioned by, oh, yeah. uh, by the same artist that did our last thumbnail. Yeah, you guys, you guys will see um, it. It's going to look dope. We're going to pump her when that when that drops. Yes, um, it's it's going to be um, in honor of our current year's theme. Yeah, I think that's the thing we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, I guess by doing this, we're setting the, a precedent, a precedent for that. that. There needs to be another year of next year. I love I'm the thumbnail sure. art. I love yeah, it. me too. I'm a fiend. Yeah. Um, let's read some long rest questions. If okay. you're a Patreon subscriber, you can send in messages to us to be read right on the show on this back half. Uh, this one's by Anthony Matareliano. <laughs> Sorry about I your last name, you Anthony. Got you got it. Um, so Anthony says... Uh, I guess this is in regards to the Dungeon Cast and Super Quest, but um, your both your shows kick ass. Can't Thank wait, you, for, Anthony. Can't wait for the ra- uh, Ricelin, Rasslin, Ricelin, Ricelin, Ricelin episode. Ricelin, Ricelin. That's a wizard. Yes. Uh, my question is, what got you into D and D? Mine was through Dragonlance. Mm. I actually read the books for years before ever playing a game, mm. and now I can't get enough of both. And you guys should totally do a Kender episode. We will do a Kender episode. Um, Dragonlance, that's like you. Yeah, just like me. So I read Dragonlance for years and years, and I didn't even know what D&D was. Just like this guy. Um, yeah, and uh, when I was around the same age, I got into a game called Dragon Strike, which I didn't know was made by TSR, who made D&D. It was like D&D Lite, but I loved it. Again, didn't draw the lines or connections, but later on in life, I think in my early 20s, I had a buddy of mine who was like, hey, do you want to try D&D out? I've been looking into it. It seems pretty cool. And it reminded me of Dragon Strike immediately, and I was immediately like, fuck yes, let's do it. And it was 10 times better. And now here I am. Cool. Uh, I worked with Will at a job together. <laughs> I, I feel like we've been telling him. the story a lot. I, yes, I, I planted my my fungi. Yeah, he was like, come play D and D. We should do a podcast about D and D. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is fun as fuck. So, Indeed. all right, we're gonna read one more. Um, oh, okay, by uh, Carl D. Busca. Uh, I admit that at first I bypassed your show because I play three point five, and my homebrew is based on it. Lore on specific monsters and audio format is rare, so I gave it a shot one day. I've been hooked ever yeah. since. <laughs> Giving lore for other editions is a nice bonus, but you actually discuss the history of your subject and how it interacts with the world instead of just reading the stat block and arguing about an encounter. You've provided not only a wonderful lore base for me to work with, but also numerous encounter and arc ideas. Thank you. Yeah, thank Carl. you, Carl. Thank you so much. There's a bunch, Carl. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, we're we're going to keep a few in the bank. We've got some people that have sent in... Uh, uh, a good healthy amount of messages and we really appreciate that we want right. to read stuff on the show and interact with you guys so please uh if you are a patreon subscriber please send in questions um that's not for super quest saga we we're gonna our next super quest saga episode or the one that just aired this previous tuesday if you're listening to this on the day it comes out um it's called super talk saga we hit a bunch of questions we'll start answering more questions after that episode drops if you, they're not relevant to that episode otherwise we're just going to redirect you there and i think I need to go to fucking sleep, dude. So let's call it a game. Let's call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.